first told me about him, but I had never heard him until November last year, right here in this same auditorium, where the Lord so mightily used him and the holy convocation of the Church of God in Christ. I don't know what it is. I don't know in what way he will come. But I want you to receive from Atlanta, Georgia. Hallelujah. Founder and pastor of the Citadel of Hope in Atlanta. Pastor Nathan Simmons. Give God a praise for him. And behold, even now, know that I have gathered thee in this place, and in this time, and in this hour. For yea, I shall do it expressly, wonderful and magnificent, yea, even marvelous things in thee. Now concerning the things that thou hast endured, the things that thou hast travailed in, yea, know that I've watched thee, I've seen thee with my own eyes, yea, the expressions upon thy face and the countenance thereof have come nigh before my dwelling. Watch me now and see what I shall do, for I shall show you in the glory, mm, in the glory I shall show you, in the glory I shall but reveal, and I'll reveal unto you the conclusion of the matters that concern thee. I'll show you the end while you're yet in it. I'll show you the end while you're yet in it, saith God. Now watch me, for I have heard thy prayer. I have seen the tears and the afflictions thereof. Now watch me deliver now, saith the Lord of hosts. Watch me deliver now, saith the Lord of hosts. Lift those hands, if you will, in the sanctuary for just a few moments and give God glory. We so thank you, Jesus. We lift you and magnify your name. We glorify you because you're magnificent in God. We thank you because it's in you we live, we breathe, we move, and simply have our being. Have your way, Kashiba. Have your way today. Oh, as you've been doing, God, have your way from this point on. For the next 25 minutes or so, God, take us into another atmosphere. Into another hemisphere, God. Do in us whatsoever you will. I beseech you by your mercy. Don't let a man, woman, boy, or girl leave here the same way they've come in. Holy Ghost, give us the entrance of your word because it giveth us life. Holy Ghost, sit Nathan Simmons down. These are your people and they don't want to hear me. They need to hear from you, God. Your mind, your mouth, your will, your heart, your desire. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Speak in the name of Jesus. Oh, For just a few moments, Lord, anoint us. Anoint me, Lord. Anoint me, Lord. Please anoint me, Jesus. Anoint me or else. Anoint me or else. Anoint me or kill me, Holy Ghost. Because I don't want to live without your anointing. I don't want to move without your anointing. Do with us what you will. In Jesus' name the people of God shall glory and we shall glory again and this time when you say it there's some glorying in the glory wrap back and shall go oh, oh, 
I, I, I know we just don't have a lot of a few minutes but there's another level in the Holy Ghost I dare to lay hands on your body and lay the other one up in the air and rear back and shout glory yeah. I feel something over there. I feel some deliverance over here. Come over and see the Yes. 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 We don't have to break us here uh, for just a few moments. If we can just uh, kind of skip around, we honor the Lord for His goodness and for His mercy, for salvation so full and so free for Bishop Patterson and for uh, all of the men of God that serve uh, here in this conference, the First Ladies, all of you God's people. How many for just a few moments want to hear from the mouth of God? Tell your neighbor, I don't want to hear no mess. Don't want to hear no junk. Tell them, I refuse to be entertained today. I got to hear from God now for just a few moments and a few moments it has it must be the book of second Chronicles chapter number 32 we were praying about what God said this morning and uh, forgive us we just kind of got lost in the Holy Ghost in the room you know hallelujah he's that kind of God the book of second Chronicles chapter number 32 and we're going to begin reading uh, for the sake of time just a few verses into your hearing verse number five he also strengthened himself and built up the wall that was broken and raised up the towers and another wall without and repaired Milo in the city of David and made darts and shields in abundance and he set captains of war over the people and gathered them together to him in the street of the gate of the city and spake comfortably unto them saying be strong and courageous be not afraid nor dismayed of the king of Assyria nor for all the multitude that is with him for there be more with us than with him with him is an arm of flesh but with us is the Lord our God to help us to fight our battles and the people rested themselves upon the words of Hezekiah the king of Judea after this did Serenship the king of Assyria send to his servants to Jerusalem and he laid himself in the siege in Lysis and his power was with him and Hezekiah the king of Judea and all Judea were at Jerusalem saying thus saith Serenship the king of Assyria whereon do ye trust that ye abide in the siege in Jerusalem do not let Hezekiah persuade you to give over yourselves to die by famine or by thirst saying the Lord our God shall deliver us out of the hand of the king of Assyria hath not the same Hezekiah taken the high places and the altars and commanded Judah and Jerusalem saying ye shall worship before one altar and burn incense upon it know ye not what I and my fathers have done unto the people of the other lands were the gods of those nations and those lands anyway able to deliver their lands out of my hand who was there among all the gods of those nations that my fathers utterly destroyed that could deliver his people out of my hand that your God should be able to deliver you out of my hand let's skip down if we will to verse 20 for this cause Hezekiah the king and the prophet Isaiah the son of Amos prayed and cried to heaven and the Lord sent an angel which cut off all the mighty men of valor and the leaders of the captains of the camp of the king of Assyria. So he returned with shame to his face to his own land. And when it was come to his house of his God, they that came forth out of his bowels slew him there with a sword. Thus the Lord saved Hezekiah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, from the hand of Serenachef, the king of Assyria, and from the hand of all others, and guided them on every side. Many brought gifts to the Lord of the Lord unto the Jerusalem and presents to Hezekiah the king of Judea so that he was magnified in the sight of all the nations. Key verse 14. Who was there among the gods of those nations that my fathers utterly destroyed that could deliver his people out of mine hand that your God should be able to deliver you out of mine hand 
not enough to be anything but do me a favor and look at somebody dead in the face eyeball to eyeball and ask them this question if you will tell them who told you that my God couldn't deliver me say it if you will to someone on the other side who told you that my God couldn't deliver me uh, look at somebody across the room and ask them this say all I want to know is who told you that my God couldn't deliver me uh, now lay hands on yourself and say God I don't know when I don't know how but you're going to deliver me clap your hands and tell God thank you now for just a few moments if you will uh, it's imperative in this last hour that the people that know that God find themselves being strong and doing the exploits of the spirit understanding that in this last day Satan and all that he does is on a rampage and sometimes moving in areas of our lives that, that seemingly have been strategically evolved that would cause us to have setbacks and cause us to have dimensional delays and cause us to find ourselves in positions of wondering when and how and where and what in the world is God doing God I don't know what I don't know where I don't even know how but somehow another in the ramification of the spirit God brings up people that understand him to the width that we recognize that we lean not to our own understanding but in all of our ways we acknowledge him so to the point that we question not his will nor his purpose for insignificance God does what he wants when he wants to and how but we rather tap into the realm of the spirit and understand that in the dimensions of the Holy Ghost that the only only reason why God is allowing some things to happen in the lives of individuals is that there are greater and greater and greater deficits that must be remained when we understand that believer we come to grips with the reality of knowing that the only reason why God is allowing some of us to go through some of the things that we go through is because God's about to promote us into areas where the devil said we could never go only reason why God's about to heal you amen from the cancer heal you from the tuberculosis heal you from the sugar heal you from the age is because God's about to give you a healing ministry and you can't tell nobody that God's a healer except you've ever been sick uh, you can't tell nobody God's a way maker except he's ever made your way you can't tell nobody God will bring you out except he's brought you out whether he snatched you pushed you pulled you whatever it took to get you out that's what God had to do and so will he does in this last hour is he brings us to a place where we understand the mindset of God because the steps of good men must be now ordered by God and where he leads me we must now follow when we understand that believer we come to grips with the reality of what the Holy Ghost is now sharing but in order for us to grasp the full meaning allow me not to deal with a long drawn out introduction but go directly to the meat of the story in order for us to grasp the full meaning of what the Holy Ghost wants to share with us this morning we've got to leave this place we've got to now sojourn in the spirit into another atmosphere hemisphere beyond Saturn and Mars and Jupiter into the holies of holies so we can sit down at the feet of the Messiah and hear what Jesus says so that he that hath an ear can only hear what the Spirit says unto the church we're walking back in time to the year 713 years before the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ it's an awesome time now because the principal character here now is a man by the name of Hezekiah and I don't mean Walker when you understand that believer you'll recognize this man under the auspices of the Holy Ghost have been nurtured in the ways of God his consideration is that of being holy and devout and consistent in maintaining his deliverance in God Bible the Bible the Bible the Bible says 
when this man comes on the scene he understands who he is he has no protégés he has no mentoring system it wondered and I questioned why it was that when the righteous men would come forth God would allow wickedness to reign ah but then when wickedness would decease the preachers would somehow never become backslidden I wondered why it was and it's here that God began to share with us Hezekiah now is reigning Jehoshaphat has died Ahab and Jezebel have gone on about their business has been no rain for three and a half years and the dogs have lapped up the blood of Jezebel by the wall Bible says it comes to pass now that Hezekiah has now died his mother has reigned and Jotham the Bible says comes upon the scene Joaz repairs the breaches in the wall and Uzziah now dies so that Isaiah can see the Lord and the Bible the Bible the Bible says it now comes to pass that here God's man Hezekiah comes on the scene at a ripen time I'm convinced that time belongs to God and to everything there is a time and there must be a season uh -oh, I just heard the Holy Ghost say there's a shift coming in seasons and we're moving just from a season into our due season look at somebody say it's my time now Bible says it now comes to pass when this thing takes place that Hezekiah comes on the scene ripen and at a young age but he lacks something that is not into other men he lacks now the need of actually standing sufficiently in God he's lacking under others and wants camaraderie he wants to belong and so now he adapts himself in the business of selecting friends but the problem here now is that the Bible said he that one of the friend must first show himself friendly he doesn't understand that God gives friends uh, that's why it's important now that we don't just deal with associates and confuse them as friends friends don't talk about you friends don't lie on you friends don't turn their back on you uh, uh, the Bible said a friend loveth at all all times when this thing happens the Bible says it now comes to pass that when Hezekiah associates because of the lack and the deficiency of incompleteness on the inside he recognizes I want camaraderie I want to belong I want to be accepted the Bible says in so doing he hooks up with the man who is in the same position uh, that he is but the difference here now is that when you associate we must be cautious because association brings on assimilation oh, you've got to understand how can two walk together except or unless they agree come out from among them and be ye separated saith the Lord birds of a feather flock together oh, have you ever noticed all the liars hang out with the liars all the gossipers know who to call to find out the latest gossip Oh, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible says in so doing, when he associates, he does not discern in the spirit. He takes it from a sociology form of being. Oh, but you can't judge a book by its cover. The Bible says when he does this, he comes on the scene and the Bible says in so doing, this man associates with the man who doesn't have the same kind of quality of existence as he does you see you've got to be cautious and you've got to be careful uh, I know sometimes we're considered to be prima donnas and somehow another strange because we don't want to associate with everything and everybody but look at your neighbor and tell them it's not that I'm being difficult uh, it's just that I don't know if you got as much to lose as I've got see when you pay a price for your anointing when you pay a price to walk with God you can't associate with it and anything I'm convinced if you fool around with dogs you're gonna get fleas and if you lay with them you're gonna have some puppies I have the Bible the Bible the Bible the Bible says 
<laughs> it came to pass that this man associates with a man who lacks something in the name of friendship. Outwardly he decides that I'm a friend, but inwardly he doesn't discern in his spirit. And so because of this, Hezekiah, the Bible says, doesn't understand that what Sarita Chaff actually is, is a man that's insecure or outwardly jealous of his anointing and his position. He has everything that Hezekiah has. But when I looked at that realm, God began to speak to me concerning the matters. He said, Nathan, the only reason why there is jealousy is because of the inward lack called insecurity. Whenever there is insecurity on the inside, there will be an outward manifestation of jealousy. Uh, and then when there is an outward manifestation of jealousy as a result of the inward manifestation thereof of insecurity, it will be because a person doesn't know who they are. You see, when you know who you are, you don't have to be jealous of nobody. You recognize the same God that blessed you, honey. He can turn around and bless me. Ah, uh, yes, if you keep on living, everything gonna happen just like it's gonna happen. And then ultimately, the reason why a person may be insecure and not know themselves is because they don't know God. Because when you know God, you recognize that the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You recognize this in all of your doing that it's in Him we live, we move, we breathe, and simply have our being. Bible, the Bible, the Bible says it now comes to pass when this man Hezekiah doesn't understand properly the relationship in its content and in so doing he now submits himself even unto Serena Chaff not understanding that Serena Chaff means him no good. Bible says he smiles but watch the smiles that smile in your face because they can stab you dead in the back Bible says it came to pass now that Serena Chaff in time began to show his true colors. When this thing happened, the Bible says Hezekiah now is so aware and so illumined at the evasion that he doesn't understand the discerning and spirits and the importance thereof. When this thing happens, the Bible says it now comes to pass that at first Serena Chaff friendly succeeds him. Uh, my people are as your people. People. Uh, your people are as my people uh, and they bond with the legions thereof in so doing the Bible says long after the Bible says Serena Chef now is fine for as long as Hezekiah is butty butting as long as they're sitting up and eating and drinking and being merry it's fine but here comes the prophet Isaiah I'm convinced when there is a call upon your life when there is a need of conviction in your spirit God will raise up a real man of God that won't speak to you about cars or houses or money he won't prophesy about no husband no wife he'll walk in your spirit point his thing at you and say thus saith the Lord you see, I'm convinced that when real prophecy come forth, it's not what we are used to seeing that brings about an awe. I'm convinced that when real prophecy comes forth, it's like the saints of God used to say years ago. Lord, speak. Lord, have your way. Lord, do what you want to do. And then those that were not in the place with God where they should be would find themselves saying, Father, forgive me for I know not what I do. God, if you forgive me, don't show them. Don't show me. Don't show them now. But what prophecy has become now is something like psychic. 900 because in the church we've got psychics that prophesy to get filthy Luca prophesy to see blessings but I'm convinced God can't bless you over your mess oh I can't hear nobody how God gonna bless you when you don't live right how God gonna bless you when you don't pay your tithe oh the Bible the Bible the I'm convinced that real prophecy is not something you ain't never heard before but real prophecy should be confirmation to that that God has already put in your spirit and if you ain't never heard it before that means there's something wrong with your prayer life something wrong with your walk with God but tell somebody I need a real word now it brings about healing. It brings about deliverance. It brings about change. Oh, look at somebody say, that's what I'm here for. 
Well, I didn't come to the Soul Winners Conference just to shout. I didn't come here just to run around. I didn't come here just to get dressed. I came because I want to be free. I want to go back home and help my pastor. I want to get on the streets. I want to cry out and spare not. Oh, God. And so the Bible, the Bible says, take your seat for just a moment if you will. Bible, the Bible, the Bible says, and now comes to pass, good God from Zion, when this man now starts out uniquely developed in relationship, but sooner or later he shows his true colors. Uh, Serena chapter now the Bible says uh, as long as Hezekiah and him were on the same wavelength uh, they were fine they were all right but now the Bible says that Isaiah comes forth with a prophecy a prophetic utterance from the mouth of God and says unto him set your house in order you die at first Hezekiah gets a little itchy and a little edgy because he remembers that how in the world can Isaiah prophesy to me and tell me God, what God is saying when I was serving God when he was washing worshiping Uzziah it wasn't even until Uzziah died that he saw the Lord God said to me Nathan Simmons what I'm going to do is bring up the remnant the folks from behind the scene the folks that don't nobody want to deal with the little nobodies they walk in the church with their tambourines and with big coffee table bibles speaking in tongues i can't hear nobody and prophesying at the exit door the ones that everybody else says are crazy honey but god's gonna use all us crazy Cause the same folks ain't gonna pray because God tell them to lay out on the floor they're gonna be too cute I can't hear nobody they ain't gonna want to mess up their floor but God tell you to roll your roll until he rolls everything out of you that's not like him oh I guess somebody that remembers when we used to be holy rollers the rep back and say I remember we used to be holy rollers the Holy Ghost would roll everything out of us. And when we got up, we got up speaking in tongues. Oh, I know you don't speak now because your pastor don't speak. I can't hear nobody. Grab right back and tell somebody, sanctified folks speak in tongues. Yeah, every now and then, you got to check yourself. Father, here. Son, here. Holy Ghost, in Katana Masia Tababahos, in Abasa. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Oh, be a shadaba. So when you understand that the Bible says, oh goodness it comes to pass when this man is found at a place where he now shows his true colors you may take your seat when this thing happens the bible says it comes to pass that as long as they were cut button and slapping each other high five and sitting up in restaurants and being wonderful they were all right but when that word came from the mouth of god hezekiah jilted himself he came to himself and understood wait a minute God's trying to get my attention. God's trying to tell me something. God's trying to get me in the right place with him. When this thing happens, the Bible says that Hezekiah goes into prayer. And when he goes into prayer, the Bible says the first thing that he does is he starts setting things in order. Now, let's understand this. When we understand that Hezekiah's word came to him in such a fashion and form that it confused me literally. Because I said, God, you already said that this man was perfect and upright that this man loved you this man did everything that was right in the eyesight of God and that's when God said to me Nathan Simmons but that was not his mandate his mandate was not just to secure himself in righteousness but when God puts in position leaders he doesn't put them in position just so that they can obey in their own self-righteousness but rather so that they can lead others into a righteous state of being the Bible the Bible the Bible says it now comes to pass that Hezekiah now starts beginning to set things in focus 
he moves in a right relationship now he's he's no longer scattered about and insecure about his self or his relationship and so when he does this the Bible says the first thing he does is he shuts up the waters thereof of the wells he closes up the rivers and puts borders thereof Bible says he goes to the garden groves that were offered up under Baal and Ashtaroth and the Bible says he actually tears down those graven images then thirdly the Bible says that he actually shuts down the portable worship stations and stops dividing and conquering uh, here a little and leaving there a little and the Bible says he brings them back into one central place of worship he brings them back now to the place of one corporate place of dwelling so that when corporate worship goes forth it moves the throne of God because the one thing the devil doesn't want to see is a couple together of the righteous of God because he knows that one can chase a thousand and two can put ten thousand a flight and so the Bible the Bible the Bible says it now comes to pass when Hezekiah uh, gets back in the right business of winning souls and doing what God told him to do the Bible says he actually actually finds himself leading the people back into splendid worship I wondered what splendid worship could be and that's when God said to me Nathan worship spirit now is not just lifting hands so not just running and skipping and hollering it's not just in here when you worship him but it's in your room it's in your house it's in your kitchen while you're washing the dishes it's in the shower while you're taking a shower oh god i love you oh god i praise you riding along in your car at the stoplight saying god if it wasn't for you if it had not been for the lord that's on my side oh that's wonderful there but when you get in here you recognize god i worship you not for what you do not for what you have done but for who you are because if you never do anything for me God you're your God if you never heal my body you're God if you never deliver me you're God I dare somebody run back and look up and say you're God you're God you're God you're God oh my shut up Oh, uh, for the Bible said God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth when this thing happens the Bible says it now comes to pass when Hezekiah gets back in focus he starts aligning things up he starts getting things in order his people now start lining up he brings them together from the north the south the east and the west and he gathers them together and speaks words that would exalt and even comfort them he tells them let's build the walls in Milo let's make darts and shields in other words he gathers the people together uh, to make darts and shields for war and God said to me Nathan Simmons about four o'clock this morning he said when you get down there you're not gonna have a long time but tell him this he said the reason why I brought them from everywhere to Memphis even before the convocation is so that we make war he said I'm gonna equip them with darts I'm gonna equip them with shields I'm gonna give them Swords. They gonna go back home and kick the devils behind. What tell you, son of a What tell somebody I'm about to kick that devils behind? I don't like him. I don't like what he did. I, I don't like what he's doing. This means war, devil. And the Bible, the Bible, the Bible says. It now comes to pass, people of God. Take your seat for just a minute. It comes to pass, I promise. I promise. I promise I won't be but so, but so long. The Bible says it now comes to pass. Who can shut up? Oh, how many felt the Holy Ghost unction? Oh, good God for I mean this thing. Oh, the Bashiata Home Day. Oh, you gotta recognize, you gotta recognize God sent you here because He spoke to me in the spirit. He says, Some of you already got the power, but you don't let it lie dormant. Your gifts have been somehow another tarnish. Oh, but God sent you here to get a release. Oh, I feel a release in my spirit. I feel a release, a release. See, because what 
most of us have been dealing with is carnality and flesh but we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places tell somebody the devil is a liar tell him I'm so mad at the devil I'm gonna go get me some souls I'm gonna get me some drug addicts I'm gonna get me some prostitutes oh yeah you fill your church with saints if you want to let me have the sinners and so the Bible says it came to pass Lord Jesus when this thing take your seats now the Bible said it came to pass I just heard the Holy Ghost say there's a wave of a new anointing Oh, but I dare you just to wave your hands and say, I'm not a siata baba. He cut all over Hosia. He cut out. He must your tomo. He cut out. Every time you do it, you're slicing the devil's prayer. You're dividing the enemy's prayers. You're tearing the enemy's siata baba. He cut out all the ones. And we lift our hands and say, We thank you, Lord. Mm. And so the Bible, the Bible, the Bible says it now comes to pass now when Serenichek's real colors show up. His name in the Hebrew means this. He who is my brothers. But Hezekiah never takes the time to discern in the spirit brothers what? And so because of that, the Bible says he has to experience some things in the flesh to guard his spirit to shield his spirit and when this thing happens the Bible says it came to pass that Hezekiah now uh, actually begins to do what God says to do and Serenichef got mad now the sad thing about it is a friend wants you to obey God Anytime you hang out with somebody and you feel like praying and they don't want to pray, that ain't your friend. If every time you pick up the phone and you talk to them, you can talk about everything and everybody else and can't talk about God, wrong company to be around. I can't hear nobody. You ride in the car with somebody and you all of a sudden feel like praying. I can't hear nobody speaking in tongues while you're riding along in the car and they turn the radio up and say... Louder to drown you out, I can't hear nobody. Pull that car over and say, let me out of here. Because we are unequally yoked. You obviously don't want to go where I want to go in God. I want to go higher. There's a deeper depth in God. There's a place I ain't never been before. And the Bible, the Bible, the Bible says, here comes the end. Serenichap's name starts coming into real permission. His name now simply means, he who is my brother's destroyer. Or he who has been sent to destroy the brother. Now if you look through the scriptures, who's the accuser of the brethren? Satan comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I'm convinced there's more devils walking around with Bibles in their hand in three-piece suits and alligator shoes. I can't hear nobody. There's more demon sisters walking around with Jack McCards on. Oh, I can't hear nobody. Check out your spirit. Ask the person next to you. Tell them whose side are you on. Good God from Zion. If God be for me, who can be against me? 
and so the Bible the Bible the Bible says it now comes to pass when Hezekiah now understands that Serenachef is showing his true colors and when he does that he resorts back into prayer let's finish for just a few moments and end it somewhat like this Bible says that Serenachef sent letters out to the people and started allowing himself to destroy leadership in its totality I'm convinced that the plan of the enemy is to destroy leadership so there'll be no confidence whatsoever so there'll be no allegiance whatsoever because a house divided against itself will never ever stand and the Bible the Bible the Bible the Bible says it now comes to pass now when Hezekiah says what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna play games with Serena Chef because Serena Chef is not my problem with him is the arm of flesh but with us is the Lord our God to help us all I want to know is there anybody here that the Lord ever helped in the time of trouble is there anybody here that the Lord brought you out of darkness into a marvelous light and I, I, I Lord I feel like preaching this thing the Bible said it came to pass that old Serena went about in his business now I don't have a whole lot of men but if I can just illustrate for just a few moments can I get a few of y'all brothers to just come on over here about five or six if you will yes come on over here Bible says they came over a one by one come on my brothers and the Bible declares that when they came over the these were considered mighty men these were men somehow another that everybody knew don't mess with them I can't hear nobody because they'll get you but I'm convinced that when you're in the Holy Ghost you don't recognize that you're dealing, you're dealing with who not to deal with but you recognize that God before you who can be against you Bible says now that Serena Chef uh, when you come to security man Serena Chef the ring leader comes on the scene and when he does the Bible Bible says he tries his best uh, can I please use you as Hezekiah uh, Hezekiah comes on the scene the Bible says uh, and begins to hook up with Isaiah uh, Isaiah and Hezekiah uh, looks up in the spirit uh, now notice this it confounds the devil uh, because in other words uh, they're supposed to be divided uh, because he represents spiritual and he represents natural uh, but what the enemy don't understand uh, is it's first natural huh, then spirit uh, if you get your natural together honey uh, your spirit gonna line up uh, if you get your spirit man together your spirit gonna work on your natural uh, and tell the oh y'all don't hear what I'm saying uh, oh that's why the Bible said he sees something on the inside uh, it's working on the outside uh, bringing about a change I can't the Bible says it came to pass uh, that when the man Hezekiah uh, who was the king uh, got together with Isaiah uh, who was the prophet uh, the Bible said it messed up Serena Chaff's theology uh, because as long as they were divided uh, he had a chance to get in between them uh, but as soon uh, as they came together the Bible says something started happening now what I like about Hezekiah and Isaiah is they didn't come together for no business meeting they didn't come together for no regional I can't hear nobody a seminar to work out how we go raise more money now that's not what the people wanted the Bible the Bible the Bible says that oh Isaiah and Hezekiah came together to fulfill the scripture that Isaiah prophesied Side. Oh, I can't hear nobody. For unto us a son will be given and a child is born. And then wait a minute. He says, and on the government shall be upon his shoulder. What are you trying to say, Nathan Simmons? When the priests get together and the leaders get together, when the church gets together and the politicians get together, have y'all noticed what happened in Washington? Don't you know everything that's going on is in the timing of God? Oh, get off of what the man did huh? and recognize this is an opportunity huh? because some preachers would have never walked in the White House. Huh? I can't hear nobody. 
<laughs> oh yeah, he would have never repented. He would have kept on dealing with Monica. I can't hear nobody, cause some of y'all getting a little bit now, you just ain't got caught. I can't hear nobody. Oh, when you understand what's going on, you recognize, you recognize. Oh, that when the church gets together and the politicians get together, oh, that's the way God planned it. So the government shall be upon his shoulder. The government gonna come back to the church. I can't hear nobody. Our children gonna be educated through the church. Blind eyes gonna come open because you're not gonna have no more Medicaid. You're gonna have to call for the elders to lay hands on the sick. It's coming back to grips that if my people that are called by my name would humble themselves and get down on their knees and spend some time in prayer prayer changes things if you ever learn how to pray and let God have his way prayer 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 changes things they got down on their knees and they started praying will you do me a favor and pray my brothers I mean pray in the Holy Ghost pray that God starts healing pray that God starts delivering pray that God starts making waves out of no ways that God starts bringing in souls from the very gates of hell now notice this it's long as long as Serena Chap and Hezekiah was running together, everything was all right. But when Hezekiah started praying, Serena Chap got mad, put out breathings and threatenings. But I'm so glad that he didn't do it necessarily unto the people of God. But the Bible says the first thing he does is he declares unto them, Don't you let Hezekiah persuade you that your God should be able to deliver you out of my hand I come to tell you that as long as he was talking about oh Hezekiah as long as he was balling his fists up and oh Hezekiah ball your fists up and oh Hezekiah ball your fists up and oh Hezekiah ball your fists up and oh Isaiah as long as they were breathing threatening against them it was all right but he made a permanent decision to start messing with his God you can mess with me mess with my mama mess with my daddy mess with my friend play with yourself but you can't play with God I can't hear nobody the Bible says he looked up and started breathing threatening like he was breathing them at God and that's when God said oh buddy you done did the wrong thing now the Bible said Hezekiah prayed and Isaiah cried when they cried something happened God sent an angel all the way down from heaven come on brother angel come on brother angel God sent an angel all the way down from heaven and said all right heads you ain't got to fight this battle I'm going over here I'm gonna fight this battle for you that angel knocked them brothers out come off the great throats come on knock them out now all the way down knock them brothers out knock them brothers out knock them brothers out went on back to heaven and the bible says that when they knew anything serena chap went back to his sons went back to his sons trying to get his sons to understand i can't hear nobody trying to get his sons to still love him and the bible said that the sons that came from his own bowel slew that man come on kill your daddy i can't hear nobody they slayed that man he went on down good God from Zion and said another one bites the dust but what I like about it as the Bible said not only did they pray but the Bible said they cried look at somebody and tell them it's all right to cry God said that the word for cry 
in the Hebrew was considered not a word of feeling melancholy, feeling sorry for himself, but it was a Hebrew word, todah, he lie, which means thank God in advance. So after they prayed, they told down, they said, God, we done prayed about it, but now we thank you for working it out for us. We thank you for doing the work in us. We thank you for bringing us out. I can't hear nobody. They got up off their knees, went over, looked at the enemy, said, oh my God, look what God done did. He done delivered me over here. Look at serenity. And they still over serenity. And they still over serenity. And said, we got one question to ask you. Why you down that graveyard dead? Ha, ha, ha. Who told you that my God could deliver me? I want to know who told you that God couldn't bring us out? Who told you that God couldn't make the way out of no way? I got two more minutes, but let me ask you a question. Who told you that your God could not deliver you? God sent me here from Atlanta, Georgia to tell you this is your time of deliverance. You've been praying. You've been fasting. You've been crying out. You've been telling God. God said, I heard you. I saw you. Now watch me deliver you. Watch me bring you out. Watch me bring you through it. Watch me take you out. Watch me bring you in. I know it's hard, but there's nothing too hard for my God. The God that I serve, he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above that I ask or I think is God, God, then God can do anything, he can heal, he can save, he can bring you through, he can make a way out of no way, God, 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 God can do anything, I came to tell you, I know you've been waiting for a long time, but look like the wait, seem like you're waiting on it, but God told me to tell you, never mind about your wait, your wait is over, Isaiah said, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, they shall mount up, I shall mount up with wings like an eagle. Run and not be weary. Hold the chair. Walk and not faint. I heard him say, wait on the Lord. Hold the chair. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. And he will, he will, he will strengthen your heart. Tell your neighbor, you've been waiting for a long time. But wait is over. God gonna deliver. God gonna bring you through. God gonna bring you out. Dry the tears from your eyes. Weeping, 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 weeping. May endure for a night. But joy, but joy, but joy, joy, joy. Ask your neighbor, ask your neighbor, tell them all I want to know is who told you that my God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of those, the God of healing, the God of deliverance, God, God, immutable, God, omnipresent, God, omniscient, the God I serve, be able, be able, be able. Yes, he can. Can God heal? Can God heal? Can God deliver? Can God bring you out? Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Yeah. Listen. We gotta stop, but ask the person next to you. Tell them, can God deliver you? Go ahead on and ask them now. 
What is it that the God I serve is not able to do? Can God do anything? Tell him anything. God! 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 God can do it! Anything God can do anything God can do anything. Now listen. Oh how many feel like me? How many feel some miracles in the air? How many feel some healings in the room? How many feel some breakthroughs here? Tell your neighbor, guess what? God's about to deliver me. Right now. Not tomorrow. Not next week. Not next year. But right right now glory 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 be Asha now listen to me I'm I'm moving a little bit on overtime but is there anybody here that heard God today Tell the person next to you what you heard. Ask them the question. Ask them the question, who told you that my God Do me a favor and look at him. Look him dead in the face, eyeball and eyeball. Say, I got one question to ask you. Tell him, I know what the doctor said. I know what the lawyer's saying. I know what it looked like. But I got one question to ask. Who told you that my God? Finish it, y'all. All I want to know. Who told you? Who told you? My God couldn't deliver. Listen to me. I'm definitely on overtime. But is there anybody this morning that don't regret that you got up this morning? See, it was perfect timing, Evangelist Lee Van Zandt, because your testimonies and your encouragement concerning deliverances of your husband, of sons, of different experiences set the pace. Oh, don't ever underestimate God. God does all things well. Oh, come on somebody. I don't think I've ever preached this short. So that's a new thing right there. Thank you, Jesus. God is God was and shall ever be a what? A what? You better act like you know it. What? I saw in the Holy Ghost and I've got to hurry. But how many is she How many feel the Holy Spirit now? I just heard the Holy Ghost say the door is open for deliverance. 
is open for healing it's open for victory that have never been obtained before saints of the most high God in this building today is there anybody beside me that believes that God can heal deliver and set free For just a few moments and I promise I won't take long I'm a man of authority and under authority and so I do understand that timing is everything and I promise I won't take long but if you know that there's some areas that you know if God don't deliver in you don't know what you're going to do there's some individuals in this place today they said, Pastor Simmons, I've been struggling with stuff for years. And I couldn't tell nobody about it. Saints, there's some things you can't tell folks. You can't tell nobody but Jesus. Oh, there's some pain and some hurt and some, some things that you, you want to open your mouth to say it, but all that comes out is tears. When you raise children and look like they come up and when they were little girls and little boys, you put both ribbons in their hair and nice little flowery dresses with lace. And now that little girl is raised up and she's doing stuff that you never dreamed was imaginable. The little boy that used to get up and do the welcome address. Pray the Lord to Pater, to the thanks. I welcome you once. I welcome you twice. I welcome you thrice in Jesus Christ. And now he's 18. And you can't even drag him to church. You've been married to the same man for 20 years. And you love God and he allows you to go to church. He'll take you and drop you off and pick you up. Sit in the car until sir. he don't even get upset if the Holy Ghost takes over and runs over time. But I know it's got to hurt you. Sleeping in the bed with a man that loves you and don't love your God. Oh saints. But I come to tell you God said he's come to deliver. God sent you from wherever he sent you from. Because you go to church every Sunday. And you know just about what's going to happen when it's going to happen. And it's sad that in most of our churches, we don't even make altar calls. Folks never get the Holy Ghost. We got people that have been members of the church for 10 years. Good people and have never spoken tongues. And you sit there saying, God, that's not how it's supposed to be. And go to church week after week. No soul winning. No outreach. No block parties on the north side. No witnessing teams. Just saints that prophesy and pray for one another. This thing has got to change, saints. We've got to turn this thing around. We've got to usher in another another We've got to get a burden for souls to see God deliver. I know it's hard. I deal with it myself in my little church at home in Atlanta, Georgia. Joe Gaddis come in and it's hard work dealing with them and cleaning them up. Praying with them and staying there with them and then they have a relapse. And then before you know it, you got to go back and get them again. But oh, if you never give up on it. If you keep going back to get them, I can't hear nobody. One day God's going to deliver. One day God's going to, it may be that very time that you say, I ain't going to get them now. That one time will be the time that God will use to deliver that person. Our churches are so that we can't even take time to pray for people and make altar calls now because if we do, the church will empty out. Oh, y'all know what I'm talking about? If we tarry with people to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost or pray with people, before you know it, you'll call your own benediction. Oh, it happens here every convocation. 
as soon as the preacher gets in the hype, the church starts emptying out. Because saints don't have a burden, but look at somebody and say, you're going to pay for it. God's calling order in the court and deliverance in the house. For just a few moments, and I only have five, I want every person under the sound of my voice, as quickly as you possibly can, don't you go through no changes. Don't you lose no sleep. But I want you to get somebody by the hand. Today, we don't have a long time to pray a long, drawn-out prayer. But all I want you to do in the Holy Ghost for just a few moments is regardless to what areas they may need to be delivered in, tell them today is your day. And God is about to bring you out. We don't have time to pray a long, drawn-out prayer. But for just a few moments, if you will, I don't want you to go through no changes. I want you to speak in tongues for just a few moments. And at the unction of God, don't you wait on nothing. Just bring them on out. Just pull them on into a new deliverance. Pull them on into a new place. Don't be cute about it. I mean jerk them. I mean pull them. I mean yank them. Come on. Now pull them on out. Say, come out, come out. Now find somebody else right quickly. Find somebody else. Find somebody else. Come out from behind your seat and find somebody else quickly. Tell them I don't know what God's going to do and how he's going to do it, but you got to come out. Now you got to come out. You got to come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come on. I don't have time. Come out from behind your seat. Come out from behind your seat. And go to somebody way across the room and tell them I don't know what your problem is. I don't know how long you've been in it. I don't know what you did to get in it. But God said, This is your day, and you're coming out. You're the horse you're talking about.
lift those hands. Open up those mouths. Give God glory. Open up those mouths. Give God glory. Give God honor. Come on and worship Him. Come on and give Him the praise. Give God the glory. Give God the praise. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Hey, Cartola, come on here, y'all. He come, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, saints. Lift those hands. Give God some praise. Come on, lift up those hands. Give God some real glory. Open up your mouth. Give Him some real praise. Come on, y'all have a seat. We cut up. We gotta stop. But ask somebody the question. Who told you that my God couldn't deliver me. Tell him as a matter of fact, he ain't gonna deliver. Cause he already has. I'm already delivered. God, I feel like this. Somebody really, listen. I know in a few weeks we're coming back for the convocation to minister on Friday night again if the Lord say the same. And that's if he says the same. We're still praying about it. But if you know God is delivered today, I said if you know God's delivered, look at someone and say, I know I'm delivered. Somebody pick that man up. Somebody pick him up. Put your hand on him and say, did you hear what I said? I know I am delivered. Now tell him like this. Tell him if you know you're delivered. And I know I'm delivered. Answer what you just standing there for. Get him out of hand. Listen, wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's too easy just to shout. See, in the convocation, it's gonna be too crowded in here. And we ain't gonna be able to run. But tell somebody, I can run now. Get him out of here and say, come on here, let's run. With your delivered self.
Give it to him with everything you've got. One, two, three, yeah. We gotta stop. We gotta stop. But just touch about three folks on the shoulder and say, deliver, deliver. God said, deliver, deliver, deliver. Now listen to me. God said, who told you? I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to minister this message. I was going to minister something else. But the Holy Ghost said, don't you dare try. How many needed what God said this morning? What was it now? Who, what? Say it again, what now? Who, what? Uh, no, 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 say it just one more time and I can really know it. Come on. Listen, I, I, I just asked my bishop if I could have permission to obey the Lord. And he said to me, son, obey God. Son, obey God. I struggled this morning in prayer because I heard the Holy Ghost say something and I wanted to be obedient to him. How many know you got to learn how to obey God? Tell your neighbor, you got to obey God. Come on, tell them, you got to obey God. Some things God tells you to do, it doesn't make your flesh feel good. It doesn't make you, it doesn't make you feel good. Two things I want to say before I do that. You're here and you're not saved. You're not saved. This is a soul winners conference. You're here and you're not saved. And you say, Brother Nathan, Pastor Simmons, I'm not saved, man. I need to be saved. My mama saved, my, my grandmama saved. I, I, I know better than this. The devil got me so tripped up until I don't know whether I'm going or coming. I need to be saved all over the building are you praying saints I know that there's at least three four five I know there's some souls here that need to be saved this morning as quick as you are don't wait on nobody witness to that person ask them if, they, if Jesus came right now where will you spend eternity where you going 
tell them you got to get your business straight you got to get your house in order tell them you need to be saved if you're here this morning and you're not saved come out from behind your seats from wherever you are come on come meet me right here come on i want to be saved pastor simmons come on i want to be saved i gotta be saved I, i'm a good person but i need to be saved i, I don't want to go to hell i don't want to go to hell pastor i want to be saved i don't want to be lost I, I don't want to be lost. I, I, I don't want to be lost. I want to be saved. Saints, I'm going to ask you not to walk. If this was your cousin, if this was your niece, if this was your son, if this was your brother, you would want somebody to pray with your child. Stay here and pray with them. This young man needs to be delivered from drugs. I feel the demons of drugs on this boy holding him so but loose him in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus oh God get him get him get him come on I need to be saved man this is the time I want to be saved. You want to be saved. I want to be saved. You want to be saved. Lift your hands up to God. Say, oh God, I want to be saved. Father, you said this is your son. Yes, yes. You said this is your son. Yes, my son. How old is he? He's 22. Hallelujah. Bishop, do you see why you had to have this vision? Do you see why God had to do it while he, he did it? Do you see what God's trying to do? We ain't had no sleep since we've been here. God woke me up one of the veins down here. This man is going to go back to the ancient times. His name is Kamaz. We found out. Yes. It's a meeting place that we have. Yes. With purchase trade. Yes. We ain't getting gone in the destiny. Oh, God. Yes. Come on. Come on. Turn around, son. Every person that wants to be saved, this little baby here. Come on, children. Come on, precious. Oh, this is your wife. Come on, young people, come on. This is your sister. Come on. Come young, come old. Come on. Come on to Jesus. Come on to Jesus, come on. You may be a backslider. You may be a backslider, come on. This is your time to be saved, to be delivered and to be set free. Thank you, Jesus. Lift those hands. Listen, listen to me, listen to me. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm, we're going to pray and I'm going to tell you first of all this Jesus loves you he loves you so much that he died over 2,000 years ago listen to me son listen to me pick her up off the floor pick her up off the floor and listen to me dear listen to me now first of all let me say something to you Jesus loves you. He loved you so much that over 2,000 years ago, he died on the cross so that you wouldn't perish but have everlasting life. I want you to know something. The Bible says all of us have sinned, no matter what the sin is. Smoking, cussing, drinking, fornicating, adultery, homosexuality, lesbianism. Just being born, you were born in sin and shaped into iniquity. But shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Bible says in the book of Revelations, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man, that means you little boy, little princess, that means you would hear my voice 
and young lady with tears in your eyes harden not your heart I will come into him and sup with him and he with me the Bible says that it shall come to pass that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him up from the dead you shall be saved for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation it shall come to pass that whosoever and I'm so glad that one day that whosoever meant me and today that whosoever means you shall call upon the name of the Lord Jesus shall be saved bow your heads and close your eyes and lift your hands to God lift your hands to God and when you lift those hands you're in the presence of God Almighty and I want you to bow your heads and repeat after me these words Lord Jesus I'm a sinner and I'm tired of sinning going on the way I'm going I need a change in my life I need to be saved I need to be saved I believe that you died on the cross and on the third day that you rose again now rise in me and live in me I denounce sin and Satan no longer will he reign over me but I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior save me Jesus save me Jesus save me Jesus thank you for saving me thank you for saving me thank you for saving me and lift those hands and open those mouths and if you believe the prayer that you prayed you are saved thank God for saving you right now now that you're saved listen to me now that you're saved I don't know if they're soul winners or if they're uh, workers or counselors but if there's a place that we can take them to to work with them so that you can receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost because that's what you need I want you to follow this young man right here follow this young man follow him right now clap your hands as they're going come on oh come on you can do better than that clap your hands for these souls clap your hands for these young people God saved them now he's going to baptize them and fill them with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues Come on, clap your hands for these souls. The Bible said all souls are mine, but the soul that sinneth, it shall surely die. Now listen to me. All over this building, I want you to get somebody by the hand and tell them, whatever you do today, you've got to obey God. Come on, look at them and say, you've got to obey God. Tell them, did you hear what I said? If anybody obeys God, tell them you've got to obey him. They lift up those hands and say, God, I'll obey you. God, I'll obey you. God, I'll obey you. I struggle with this. And you only have to know me in the Holy Ghost. Pastor McDaniels, you only have to know. I, 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 that I struggle with this thing in the spirit but God said to do it because it's going to bring so many jokes or lies about ministries it's going to bring other limits 